Hello, kings and queens. You're listening to Affirmations of Excellence, an offering of personal devotions to fuel your week. I am your guide, Ariel Ellis. This is the first episode, and I'm so excited to create a space of encouragement and inspiration for each of you. As you begin a new year and a new decade, you are likely seeking to determine how to be your best self and how to discover the excellence within you. The person who lives a life of excellence is one who is willing to do and to dare. As living souls made in God's image, we are not called to mediocrity. We are called to excellence. Excellence is the result of a prosperous, well-lived and fulfilled life. And this podcast is for those who sense a royal calling on your life. Those who are learning to hear God's voice and clarity and need motivation for the assignment and who want to live out his calling with excellence. Each week, we'll explore themes of everyday life and talk through ways to escape mediocrity and find true fulfillment. Today, we face some of life's greatest challenges and difficulties ever seen in recent generations. And this podcast is designed to empower and encourage you as you strive to achieve your maximum potential against daily struggles. I'll be sharing personal stories and experiences with you, as well as offering some time for you to quietly center yourself through guided affirmations and reflection and relevant passages from the Bible with clear action steps for your week. And occasionally I might even have a surprise guest join me for a few episodes. And because this podcast is all about excellence, I will be affirming you by addressing you as kings and queens to remind you of your greatness. It's only right we start the new year off setting our intentions in prayer. So this inaugural episode is about prayer and fasting. Now, before you get confused or intimidated, just know that this weekly podcast is not meant for only religious folks and churchgoers. No, we will affirm excellence through many other topics as the weeks go by, such as excellence in our finances, excellence in the face of racism and patriarchy, Excellence in the midst of depression and anxiety. Excellence when dealing with difficult people. We are going to unpack all of that together each week. But for those of us who practice prayer and fasting, and for those who want to learn how or to improve their current routine, we'll dive in here today. Kings and Queens, be sure to share, rate, and subscribe as you listen today. Hearing God's voice is a critical skill in pursuing excellence. Many times, the hearing will only come when you're fully submitted to the highest calling of excellence and seeking to maximize the things that he's put in you. This happened for me when I started to speak to him more and spend more time with him. My routine most days starts around 3.30 a.m. I know that's really early, but there's something about the quiet of the morning that centers me. This is a recent practice because I've always been an early riser. I just need a little more discipline to stay on track and jumpstart the day earlier. The peace, the quiet, the solitude, it gives you a chance to approach the day with a clear mind. Dump everything on your heart at the feet of God and operate at your highest capacity. There's a oneness that exists when you use those early moments of the day to pray before you pick up your phone, before you scroll through Instagram to see what you missed or check email from the night before, you have specifically honored the fresh awakening of a new day with gratitude. I personally start the year with a list of prayers that I wanna dedicate my focus to. I try each week to read and meditate over them before going to bed and saying a nightly prayer for each item on my list. I will tell you, Writing your prayers down and meditating over them is a very powerful practice. I have manifested many of my goals and most passionate desires, such as relationships, recovery, business opportunities, financial increase, travel experiences, etc., just by writing things down that I wanted to communicate to God and ask him to bless for the year. Next episode, next week, I'll talk about goals And I'll get more specific about how to get down to business and manifest the excellent things that are waiting for you. As you start a prayer routine for the year, take a moment to quietly empty your thoughts and slowly honor each breath that you take and begin to pray. (sighs) 
the best way to start a prayer is to thank God for the dawning or the closing of a day for the reasonably good health that you might be experiencing, for the safety during your sleep, and then vulnerably start to share thoughts and concerns on your heart at the moment and for the day. It is simply a conversation. The more you do it, the more you desire it. That's what happens when you spend a significant amount of time with someone that you love and respect You can't wait to talk to them. You anticipate their responses. You seek their input. You long for that closeness. You are familiar with their delivery. You know their voice. Prayer is one of the most primary elements in our personal growth and transformation for living a productive and healthy life. We often, though, unfortunately, make prayer a daily transaction. It becomes this routine event. And we go through the motions. So God is treated like Santa Claus receiving a list of requests or a genie responding to a list of wishes. But Matthew 6 says, seek first the kingdom of God, or in other words, wholeheartedly pursue the excellence of God above your own ways, and he will provide your needs. And in all things, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Matthew twenty one twenty two. Those are great scriptures, kings and queens, but how do we do this in our real day-to-day life? How do we wholeheartedly pursue excellence in prayer? How do we turn off the media and our phones and truly unplug and think on the things of God? How often do we sit down and write down our prayers to God as if we were sending him a letter and take time to express detailed thoughts and feelings? A lot of us pray and we pray really hard. But not many of us are actually seeking, surrendering, and communicating with God completely free of distraction. What have you been praying for? And what should your prayer life look like this week? How often are you praying? Are you asking God or are you thanking God? Take a second to think about it. Here are a few ways to ramp up the excellence in your prayer life for the new year. Instead of telling someone I'll be praying for you in response to them expressing their need, proactively ask someone, what can I be in prayer about for you? And allow them to express that need in their response. At that moment, pursue God in prayer and begin to intercede on their behalf. Another way to ramp up excellence in prayer is to routinely offer prayers of thanksgiving deliberately for a stretch of time where the only communication you have with God is specifically to thank him. He actually hears us in a different way when we do that. He wants our adoration and our praise and thanking him lets him know that he has your attention and your gratitude. This can be challenging when you have things on your heart that need healing and problems that need solving. But in that instance, try thanking him for the outcome in advance for doing what you need him to do before the outcome has even been revealed to you. As you approach 2020 kings and queens, know that this kind of communication cannot be transactional. It must be a decision made moment by moment by moment. We're fighting against a lot in today's time. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The excellence that we can truly achieve is up against a real enemy called mediocrity. Not only is mediocrity tolerated, it is celebrated almost everywhere we go. And it's mediocrity and the comfort that it gives us that keeps us from being excellent. If excellence is what we desire, we may consider taking our prayer routine to a higher level and work in fasting. Fasting is a companion to prayer. Prayer shows our dependence on God, while fasting shows our denial of self in order to please God and to hear him. Fasting is somewhat of a declaration. It says, This thing that I'm praying for is so important that I'm willing to set aside my everyday life, including food, to focus praying about it. 
I know many folks wouldn't deliberately choose to go any length of time without eating. But did you know that medically speaking, doctors agree that healthy humans can go up to eight weeks without food as long as they have water. Now, I have a doctoral degree in education, not in medicine. So please do your research and pursue a fast only under medical supervision if you have any concerns or conditions. Most water fasts last between 24 to 72 hours, and many people do them for religious and spiritual reasons. For instance, I like to start the year with a fast. So at the moment, I'm participating in the Daniel fast with a few friends, which is a 21 day fast of only fruits and vegetables. Based on the biblical book of Daniel, this partial fast is widely applied to cleanse the body of meat, sweets, caffeine, and alcohol, and to take on a spiritual, physical, and emotional reset for the new year. I'll be increasing my devotional time during these 21 days, still working out daily, and meditating on the things that bring me and my loved ones closer to God. Now, the longest I've ever fasted without one bite of food and nothing but water is 12 days. I know that's a lot. And in those times, whether it was a 24-hour period or 72 hours or more, I log out of social media, I limit my TV and music time, and separate myself from other things that may be distractions. Now, you don't have to get rid of all of these things, but pick one that you are willing to sacrifice. However, in the end, each time I disciplined myself and combined prayer and fasting, I felt freer, stronger, and clearer. I was operating in excellence, and I witnessed God moving in supernatural ways. Now, to be clear, kings and queens, the Bible does not make fasting a strict requirement. But I guarantee you from my own personal experience, if you don't fast, you're not experiencing all that God has for you. Healings, strongholds, unanswered prayers, deeper insight and a deeper relationship with God is waiting for you. Though fasting is not a requirement, Jesus does encourage it. And you'll notice in the Bible that he and his disciples fasted at moments when the stakes were high. For instance, in Mark 9, there's a story of Jesus' disciples not being able to drive out a demon inside of a boy. But then Jesus came behind them and commanded the demon to come out. The disciples asked, why couldn't we drive it out? Jesus replied, this kind can only come out by prayer and fasting. The point is this, humans have limitations. We are susceptible to weaknesses and selfishness and doubt. And when we combine prayer with fasting, it becomes impossible for those things to hinder us. Humans are the only creature that God made with the ability to make a decision to shut down our lower instinct to reach for a higher purpose. It's because God gave us something called will. And because of will, we are in charge of responsible for and granted the privilege to enlighten our own perceptions. We manipulate the physical to gain access to the spiritual because fasting provides physical sensations that point to spiritual realities. The hunger of the stomach is designed to put us in touch with the hunger of the soul. If you also meditate and pray during your period of fasting, you will become closer to your true self and therefore become closer to God. So when should you consider fasting when you're having a hard time hearing the voice of God when you are longing for more of God and a closer relationship with him when you're battling against a weakness or struggling to end a terrible habit when you are desperate to see a generational curse or a stronghold destroyed for yourself and a loved one when you have difficulty receiving direction and guidance from the Holy Spirit on a major decision or shift in life Or when you simply want to take a moment to dedicate and offer adoration, honor, and praise to God. We live in abundant times. We feast on that abundance. And when there's excess, there's a decrease in value. However, when there is scarcity, there's an increase in value. Willfully abstaining from something changes the value of it. For instance, I love food. But I notice when I am eating out of my emotions, 
it's time to go away and take a fast. I may fast intermittently because I work out pretty frequently, or I may only do one full meal a day or only drink water for a full 72 hour period. Whatever I choose, I am making a decision to stop feeding my emotions with food. Let God search and reveal those empty places and replace my desire for food with an openness for healing. So how should you try adding in fasting to your prayer routine? A couple of suggestions. Choose a time frame that is doable for your life. Don't make goals unrealistic by scheduling fast during a busy social season, like work events, the holidays, or travel. Choose a fasting subject. Ask yourself, what is it that I feel I'm addicted to or I'm struggling to overcome? A thing, a person, a relationship, a thought pattern, a habit. You know in your heart where the issues have been nagging you and you can start with something really easy. Also, find readings, sermons, songs, books, podcasts, etc. to supply your attention and replace the things that you have been consuming. There's an element of sacrifice and an element of obedience that's tied to fasting. You are emptying yourself of thoughts, ideas, and actions that can take you out of alignment with God. It is opening up your heart at the physical level so that you can be more in tune to your personal truths. It is opening up to self-awareness through temporary self-denial so that you can achieve a higher spiritual level. Now, who wouldn't want that? Keep in mind, kings and queens, as you enter this year, our bodies and our minds are here to serve us. We are not slaves to either. We direct our minds and we control our bodies. And we can use prayer and fasting to achieve the excellence that we desire. Here's my point. We naturally unavoid uncomfortable, unfamiliar, and challenging situations. But just because something doesn't come easily for us doesn't mean we should avoid it. When it comes to pursuing excellence, we can get uncomfortable. We feel awkward and anxious when faced with authentic introspection. But opening yourself up to God about what is out of alignment with him in this new year is what he wants us to do. Because in prayer and in fasting is how we come into alignment with him. Now that we've discovered some key ways to commit to excellence this year through prayer and fasting, let's pursue these affirmations for the week. Say this with me. I am in submission to the Father as the guide of my life. I desire to be in constant communication with God. I will commit no less than 10 minutes to talk to God throughout each day. I am willing to unplug and disconnect from anything that hinders my pursuit of excellence, be it food, media, or human beings. I am willing to make more sacrifices this year in order to maximize who God has called me to be. I submit, I commit, and I permit all of my plans this year to God. Kings and Queens, may you be fully equipped to master excellence in the world this week. Go be excellent and don't forget your crowns.